The following is a selected video from masterthecontent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit masterthecontent.com. Your career, our passion. So membranes, uh, not only in closed compartments, but they are also distinct compartments themselves. So direct your attention to the figure on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, this is a diagram of a section of an inner mitochondrial membrane, which is actually home to a series of complex enzymes that couple the energy released from oxidative phosphorylation to chemiosmosis to facilitate the production of ATP. Now, that's a process you're obviously going to encounter when you watch the lecture on energy metabolism. So why membranes are important for biochemical processes is you have to remember that um, if reactions, reactions were happen, happening or occurring randomly in solution uh, and there's, you know, the positions of those reactions could not be stabilized or controlled, um, the interactions of the enzymes and let's say their substrates uh, would be dependent on random collisions. This would create a very inefficient process if you're trying to control or catalyze a biochemical pathway. So biological membranes or plasma membranes actually circumvent this problem by providing a cell with an extensive framework, or what we call a scaffolding, within which components can be ordered or placed in fixed positions for effective interactions. And the example on the screen right there is just that. In this example, we have the electron transport chain or components of the electron transport chain actively using the energy that is released from redox reactions, oxidation reduction reactions, to drive the creation of a proton gradient in the intermembrane space, the space between the inner and the outer mitochondrial membrane. Now another enzyme called ATP synthase and comes along and uses that established concentration gradient, that gradient of protons, to drive the production of ATP using ADP and a phosphate. This is a very key example of scaffolding where by the enzymes involved in a series of biochemical reactions are neatly or uniquely arranged in the plasma membrane to allow them to more efficiently perform their function. Now on the right side of the screen right there, we have another really good example of what I mean by scaffolding. And here we're talking about the transduction of energy. As you should know, the chloroplasts in plant cells are responsible for uh, producing or making energy in the form of simple sugars. Now, a lot of the enzymes that actually catalyze the series of reactions that result in the creation or in the synthesis of these simple sugars happen in the inner membrane or happen in the, um, the, the membrane of chloroplasts. So, sorry, not mitochondria, but the membrane of chloroplasts. So, looking at these two reactions, we see two key fundamental reactions. One, we have the production of energy by mitochondria, and two, we have the production of food by chloroplasts, all of which are controlled by a complex series of chemical reactions. And as you can see, the only way to efficiently organize all these interdependent biochemical processes or reactions is to order them in some manner. And the plasma membrane actually provides an excellent site to do so. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on and 